In today's video, I'm going to go over something that I've been keeping track for the last month, which is my win rate. How much have I been winning? How many trades do I win? Average risk to reward? What am I trading? And can I just dig dive into what are my statistics? What can people expect if they join and come trade live with me? Now, I'm not doing this just to show off. I'm like, hey guys, have this amazing win rate. Come trade with me so I can sell you course or whatever it is. It generally was one, something to keep myself accountable for. And, you know, uh, we do say to keep track of all your trades. I haven't been doing that the last year or something like that. I will sporadically do it. But I recently started doing it again. And the reason is you get a little complacent, right? I was getting complacent on my trading and I wanted to take it up a notch. So having some accountability makes it much easier or like, you know, puts a lot more pressure on you, but makes you become a better trader. So I want to go over those with you guys. As always, guys, leave a like, push your boy. We got to learn something in here. We'll go over. What did I do good? What can you copy? How can you do it? What did I do bad? Was this the right move? Whatever, I'm going to be going over it. And here it is, guys. These were all the stats. We started keeping track of this from Monday, 9-11. Shout out to all first sponsor on 9-11. As you guys can see, here's all, all the statistics. I don't want to zoom it out too much or it looks way too small. But here's the overall win rate after four exact weeks, which is 88% win rate. Total return with an investor of $2,000 will be 348.90%, nearly 350%. And overall total profit says five thousand one hundred twenty-six dollars, which again are great. As you guys can see, Monday at 9-11, we start with two QQQ plays, both in the green, and then we went on a nice streak until the Friday. It wasn't until Friday I took a red trade, also QQQ call again this week. You know, this is, I actually the first time I'm actually sitting down and really looking at every single every single thing. And look at this week, I only traded QQQ. I didn't even realize I did that up until Friday. We're trading some NVIDIA Netflix sprinkles. I, I remember this day, actually, we went pretty light on those, on those two trades, but they did end up playing out. And again, continue the next week, QQ, then finally some, we seen some SPY on Tuesday, and then SPY again, QQ again. Look at look at the QQ, guys. Pay attention. Look at the SPY. I took two trades on SPY. I went one green and one red, but look at Qs. I took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 trades of Qs with only one red. So can you see where my strength is, right? Spy again now, 2 to 1 on Spy. And then Apple, Spy, MD, QQ. So well, that is QQ, guys. 1, 2, 3 more. So 17 trades of QQ, 18 trades, 19 trades, 20 trades. 20 trades that only took one red on QQQ. I'm having myself up right now. What the hell? I should only be trading QQQ. Why am I not trading only QQQ? What the fuck? Guys, I generally did not even realize the statistics. And this is why it's important to look at it because you realize where your strengths are. So you see, one of my biggest strengths here, I'm only trading Spy QQ 90% of the times. So I have a couple days where I train, you know, AMD and Apple here and there, just, just four out of these 58 trades. In total, it's 58 trades, five red, 54 uh, green, sorry, 53 green. My latest 58 trades might be 59 uh, with only five red. But the main thing to note here is, guys, that we're seeing this QQQ. Uh, I do really good trading NASDAQ. So where can I go? Let's say I had a notepad. So here will be my notepad, right? My notes on how to get better. So I have the statistics. I have my, I have a month for statistics. And you do want at least a month, guys. If you're doing only a week, it's just some weeks you might do good, some weeks you might do bad, you know. So you do want a month to average it out. And I want to write down, what am I noticing here? What are the patterns I'm noticing I could get better? And the first one would be that I'm killing it when I trade QQQ. When I trade QQQ, my win rate is nearly 95%. When if I'm only trading QQQ, my win rate is insanely high, which again, now it might be something I take away and like, I only want to trade that. Because when I only trade QQQ, I was almost 100% green in that. This week, only one, one red trade over four weeks. And I trade, it's like I traded twice and one was green one was red. I was I traded half my trades you were seeing it half of them were in ticker symbol QQ if you're not QQ it's simply the Nasdaq tech stocks versus the SPY and now I'm asking myself why am I doing better when I'm trading QQ versus the SPY and the reason why I might be doing better trading QQ versus the SPY is that the SPY is 50% QQQ but then the other 50% is the Dow Jones right and the Dow Jones and the QQ sometimes don't move together so if I'm mostly focused on QQ and it's fine, I'm missing a 50% here uh, that I'm not looking at. I'm not charting it. I'm not understanding it. To me, why this is it spy? No, I'm not doing bad on spy. I'm doing quite good on spy. But maybe this is why focusing on QQ is more important. And you might be the opposite. You might be like, hey, I kill spy. I get wrecked in QQ. It's a lot of walls off for me. I don't like it. Or, hey, and this is in general. I do really well trading 
AMD. Some people trade do really well trading a single ticker or Tesla. So I will write those to I will write those down, right? And for me, it will be I need to pay attention to this QQQ and why it is so hot trading it. Now number two, I will look at what was my win rate in total. My win rate in total is eighty eight percent. Eighty eight percent. Where was my um? So now do we do win rate? Right. I don't want you guys to focus on the win rate. It's more on the R to R. So how much am I risking? Like what is my average loss? I will go here and look. Uh, really tiny loss. This minus thirteen, minus two, minus twenty, minus sixteen, minus twenty. I would just say that my average loss is about twenty percent. Right, just to give myself extra room, even if my average loss might be a little bit, um, make us up a little smaller. Even if my average loss might actually be a little bit less than that, I just always want to be safe. So from the win rate, I want to take the average, average loss, and then the average win. So with average win, you have to do math. You have to add this all up. And I do want you guys to know when we're keeping track of this, I do not pull PC3. So you guys know I always take PC3 to runners. This is not include runners and PC3, right? The reason being is, again, I want to stay down. So I already did math for you guys. My average law win is about 56%. Ooh, okay, get a round of applause for that. 56%, guys. So if I'm losing at a 20% rate, I'm winning at 56% rate, means I can take almost three losses, almost three losses. Right? And one win, one W makes up these three losses. Right? So you have to understand that is your win rate doesn't even matter. But what really does matter is your overall risk reward. The final one of my wins makes up for three losses. Start feeling really good even if I have a loss. Because if your wins don't make up your losses, then you don't start feeling good. You start feeling bad about yourself. Because so you know that you'll never be profitable long term. So those are some of the notes that you would take in place, right? When uh, when when you when you're uh, when you're looking at all this, right? We're looking at understanding what is going on here. What what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? What am I? What should I be improving? These are things that you do when I keep track of. This is how you keep track, and also in here I, li I like to keep track uh, the difference buys and sells as well. And also one more row is I did not add here, but I will tell you guys to to add is what trading setups are you taking? And I'm gonna be showing you guys one of the main trading setup. I didn't put it in there, but my number one training setup this past, um, you know, this past whatever month, my number one training setup, which was about 32% of my trades. And I don't like to show my training setups too often. My 32% setup was, th was this was this setup. So let me delete this. How to delete all this. How do we go? So my number one training setup, which I took about 32% of the times, and I'll just tell you guys, you guys have to build me a word for it, as I checked, was this. Uh, was a golden pocket, February gap combination off of the New York Open. So traded, these were the, these were the requirements of this setup, and I'm giving you guys pretty much a trading plan. You're doing really well, I'm giving you guys a free trading plan to build. So always trade the New York Open between 9.30 to 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Number two, needs... To grab liquidity, liquidity needs to be grabbed. And I will show you guys an example later. Don't, don't worry. One that I took today. Three, fair value gap needs to be created. And lastly, this to be in the golden pocket. So these are the requirements. You can write this down. This is the number one trade I took. About 30% of my trade were this. And it was one of my most profitable setup. Again, really easy to understand. And you have everything you need. You have a time. Right, when you're trading a, a trading setup, you need time, you need price, right? You have liquidity, you have velocity, which forms for value gaps will be a velocity. And you know, and then you also have mental aspect, which is Fibonacci. So let me show you guys an example real quick on trading. If this was an actual trade that we took today. So this is span of five minutes. If we go to the daily time frame, we grab liquidity as in we grabbed all under these lows in the state candle, we grabbed under these lows. If I zoom into the four hours, you can see more right here. This is actually much cleaner than the daily. And this was grabbed, right? Renders lows, you grab and you wake back above it. On the four hour, 50 minutes, you also see it. There you go. So now we have no farm payroll. This was also a catalyst into this liquidity grab. And then we close above it. To reset it, this liquidity was grabbed. And as you close back above it, close above it, you're looking good, right? Now I'll zoom in on the 10 minute, 10, 15 minute, whatever it is. Look, 830, 830. 40, a 50, right? Right, this, this liquidity gap was before the market opened. So again, fitting into our plan. And then uh, at the market open, 930 was right around here. So you've created what you create for value gap. 
to the bottom side that you kind of test. Liquidity was grabbed below this and you close back above it. So liquidity was grabbed, right? You go back to here. Okay, New York Open, is this fit? Is this going to happen between 9.30 and 10 a.m.? My entry, your entry is viewed at 9.30 a.m. Yes. Was liquidity grabbed? Yes. Was there a fair value gap? Yes. Is it the golden pocket? Let's see. I already know it's yes, but here, let's see. The low to the high of the New York Open from that liquidity grab bottom right into the golden pocket. Really easy trade. You enter, target market highs, stop loss below it, take profits on the way above the side, whatever it is. And easy peasy, easy, just show you guys an entry model. In five minutes, I showed you guys an entry model. So, how can I count this up with five minutes, but you're being fucking lazy? Write this down and take notes. It drives me crazy because when people ask me, I don't know how to trade, I give you an entry model in five minutes. But people are just too damn lazy to take it. Show you guys the statistics, show you guys how to keep track, to keep track for a month. Learn what you do best, learn what tickers, right? For me, it was QQQ and, and the SPY, the same setup was also presented on the QQQ. Same way, then they'll set up. And I just did this for you in a one 15 minute video, but you cannot fucking do it. And then you wonder why you're not profitable. You blame Discord rooms or courses you bought. Blame yourself. That's it. So, very simple, guys. Take this model, apply it. Um, so you'll find it quite profitable because you see even the risk to reward is, right? You keep it below this low, the risk to reward is pretty fucking good. So, anyway, guys, I showed you guys how I still do it. Keep track. Take notes, understand what you're doing, and as always, peace out. Before you go, leave a fucking like down below. Just leave it there, like. All right, see you guys.